evening, and welcome to Creative Broadcasting, the station of unlimited possibilities. Presents Creating Your Seat at the Table with your host, Ashley Little, as she welcomes her guest to the table. Welcome to Creating Your Seat at the Table. I am your host, Dr. Ashley Little, corporate executive by day, serial entrepreneur by night, CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, and founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLC. Tonight, we have an amazing special VIP guest by the name of Darian Sanders. A little bit about him. Darian is a singer, songwriter, performer from Kentucky, husband to Jessica and father to Titus. He has recently made his debut into the musical theater scene, performing with the national tour of The Lion King. Even with the recent entry into one of his loves and passions, before taking the Equity Broadway casting, he had been selected to perform some monumental roles in regional theaters. Jesus and Jesus Christ Superstar, Joseph and Joseph in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor, Dreamcoat, Seaweed and Hairspray, Curtis and Dream Girls, and many others. Currently, Darren leads worship around the country, and before joining Broadway, was the worship pastor at the fourth, fourth largest church in America. Darren is currently working on his first original EP, planning to be released in 2021. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing yeah. Darian Sanders. Thank you, Dr. Ashley. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. I'm humbled to have you at the table. I know everyone has heard about, you know, you know, heard me say your amazing bio. So would you please tell us about your journey? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, started out, uh, I'll just, I'll start from, from when I became a believer out in, back in 2006. Um, I went to a, a Christian conference down in Atlanta. I uh, experienced Jesus for the first time for myself and started walking in a personal relationship. Uh, came back and kind of processed and walked through at the church uh, for the next couple months and then ended up getting baptized uh, a few months later uh, and sang, sang on stage once I got baptized. There was a choir going on. It was a college choir at the time. And they asked me to sing after I got baptized. And ever since then, um, kind of been serving the Lord and singing and leading worship. So it kind of snowballed from singing specials to helping uh, kind of background vocals on stage to then walking into leading worship and then uh, started doing that and then felt a calling on my life in 2008, knew that I was called into full-time ministry. So I kind of started walking into that journey and what that looked like. Um, But part of that was um, not necessarily being in vocational ministry, but um, working full-time uh, at a bank for a part for a little bit of the time, and then I uh, moved into the school system and taught for about six years, all while still serving in the church, um, and then ended up walking into full time ministry. And so I was in vocational ministry um, and did that. I was a worship pastor, interim student pastor for a long time, and then uh, about a year and a half ago, well, actually, about three years ago, while I was singing. Um, the national anthem at a basketball game in Lexington, Kentucky. My manager saw me, um, my manager now, she wasn't my manager at the time. She saw me singing and went back up to New York and was talking to one of her clients and was, was saying like, Hey, I, I saw this young, um, black guy singing the national anthem and described me and her client was actually some good friends of mine and, um, connected us and, from there, the journey started. My manager was like, hey, have you ever thought about musical theater? And I was like, not at all. <laughs> and so because of that, uh, she was like, hey, I think you would be, be good on stage to do theater. I was like, I've never danced, never acted, never took singing lessons, literally. Um, God just gave me this talent, and so I'm using it now. And so kind of walked through what that looked like and went through a little bit of a process. Uh, did some video submissions, and two years later, after submitting a video, uh, Lion King called and said that they were looking for a cover of Simba on the national tour, um, and asked if I would uh, like to come and audition. Ended up doing that and booking the role. So, a year and a half ago, I left my full-time worship pastor position uh, at a church and joined the national tour. So that's 
that's what I had been doing. It's actually crazy. I was performing Simba. We came back to Kentucky. I was in, in my, my home city of Louisville and uh, actually tore my meniscus on stage while performing and debuting my Simba um, here in Louisville. And so I had had to have surgery in January. So I've been, been out PTing uh, my knee and recovering and getting back. Um, but the beautiful part about um, that was it, it happened right before the pandemic. So I haven't really missed that much theater because everything's been shut down. So it's, it's, um, it's sad where we are right now and ready to get back, but it's also a blessing because uh, I haven't been able to, I haven't missed anything. I'm just ready to jump back in with everybody else now. Well, I, you know, we definitely keep you in my prayers, pray that you are getting better. Right. And you're right. It gave you time to heal up so you can go back full force. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely absolutely so we're ready to go absolutely so let's talk about your passion so why are you so passionate about you know theater why are you so passionate about it yeah I honestly I love the beautiful art form that it is um mm-hmm. the mixing and the molding of so many different things it's not um a straight play just with acting um and it's not putting on a concert just with music, but it's a conglomeration of a lot of different things. Um, I love the fact of the matter that it's, it's artistry in all different kinds of forms, and the sensory aspect of it um, is a beautiful thing. And I think, um, honestly, like me joining Lion King was uh, a blessing because I remember when I went and saw it for the first time in New York City, um, when we saw the circle of life, I remember getting madly emotional and I was like, why am I so emotional over this musical? But it just brought back so many childhood memories and the nostalgia of watching Lion King with my family, like re reimagining, you know, the first time that I saw Lion King, but even more so than Uh that, just it coming to life. Um, And honestly, that's one of my, my favorite parts of the show is is the opening scene of circle of life and watching everyone's reaction to it. And so the beautiful, the beautiful part about theater, the beautiful part about uh, musical theater is, is just the ability to bring to life something in somebody's heart and in somebody's mind that sometimes they can't even imagine. And you see um, all the way audience members from my my three-year-old boy who's two at the time when he would sit in the theater all the way to 90 year old, hundred year old um, elderly people that just have this guard that's let down um, when they step into the theater. I love that. And I can tell your passion in your voice. So I love it. So let's talk about, <laughs> you know, you've been on a national Lion King tour. You're playing Simba. Like let's talk about it. How, how did you feel? I mean, you know, I'm sure you, you, like you said, you were going back into your childhood when you first started Lion King, right? Everybody remembers Simba. So how did oh, you yeah. feel and how did you feel playing the role? Yeah, all of that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. So um, my main role is I'm in, the, I'm in the ensemble and I cover Simba. And so the beautiful part about covering Simba is that I get to walk through all of, um, all of the emotions of the show but to be able to see and then bring to life um, when Simba literally comes into adulthood and when he matures. Um, but one of the aspects that I love is um, there's a song, uh, there's a song in a, as I'm playing Simba that, that I have to act in and it's called He Lives in You. And it talks through and walks through um, calling on almost like the great kings of the past. Like he walks through this, this turmoil. So everyone knows it by the, the animated feature um, of, you know, when his dad dies and he uh, falls onto this, this hill and all the, the leaves get picked up by the wind and it blows through. And then he tries to run and chase, chase his dad and Rafiki comes in and touches the water. And he's like, look harder. Like he lives in you. And so he has this conversation with his father. And so at that moment in time, it's one of my favorite, favorite parts because you see this conversation between um, these, these two people or these two entities in themselves. And you can see that 
man, he is calling upon something that is inside of him that he is not sure he is not sure of, but he is so secure in. And so I love that part simply because for me, um, you know, my hope, my faith, my love relies in Jesus. And so because of that, like I am able to draw on my faith during that part of the show. And when I look at gra- grabbing the strengths of um, the kings that I've lived in the past or my ancestors or the strength that comes from the quote unquote, the African mother, uh, motherland and the earth, like I draw my strength from Jesus. And so I think about, man, he is, he willingly left this throne, came down to earth, died and is running like, and is allowing us to run towards him. And he did that willingly. And so I'm like, man, that's, that's strength right there that I know that he died on the cross and then rose from the tomb. And so I'm like, man, I can call on that strength because I have the Holy spirit inside of me. And so because of that, like, when we get to this part and this muster up, like it's, it's almost like this lifting of the veil, this lifting of the earth to just have this mic that to move forward and to be able to then go into the next scene and the next, the next part. And that's the battle with scar. And so that's just one of my favorite parts. I just love portraying that, that character in that time in the show. I love that. I'm, I'm over here, like, you know, really into it. I'm like, wow, I love it. <laughs> Yes, I love it. I love it. And just so, what are, cause I know we got listeners that are, you know, wanting to grow, you know, Broadway and in theater. So, what are some strategies you would give to listeners who are looking to grow in theater and looking to eventually get to the Broadway level, right? What are some strategies Absolutely. you would give to those? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first, thing, the first thing I would say is do it. Everyone's like, oh, well, well how do you do it? You just do it. <laughs> You find mm-hmm. every opportunity, every aspect to perform, to do what you love. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, don't let anyone say that you can't do it. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I am, uh, I'm 35 now, but I started later on in life um, in the arts. I mean, I played trumpet from the fourth grade on. So like I, I knew music, I played music, but as far as the theater scene is concerned, you know, I wasn't one of those kids that started ballet when they were two and three. My little boy's three. We just started him in ballet class. Like, I want to make sure that he is equipped in everything that he wants to do when he wants to do it. And so, like, he loves ballet class. He's like, I'm going to going to Miss, Miss Lauren's class, Mr. J. Book. I'm going to his class. And so, like, making sure and understanding, like, just because you are wanting to start now or just because you started when you did, the beautiful part about theater, the beautiful part about art, the beautiful part about what we do is everyone's journey is different. I didn't move to New York. I wasn't on the grind. I wasn't hustling. I didn't, you know, wait tables and then go to auditions and then wait tables and go to auditions and then have six or seven jobs and dog walked and babysat and did all this and, and did the hustle, the hustle of New York, the hustle of quote unquote artistry, because that's not what I was called to do but my story is different than someone else's story. And so I was able to stay here with my family, fly back and forth to New York when I needed to do video, you know, video submissions and stuff like that. And so some people are like, well, you have to do it this way. This is the path you have to take to do this, 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 and this. No, everyone's path is different. Everyone's journey is different. Now, can things help you along that path? Absolutely. So if you're saying you want to do this, if you're saying you want to step forward, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, get into some dance lessons, get into some vocal, le- vocal lessons, getting into, get into some acting classes. Even though I was blessed to be able to do something not a lot of people are able to do, which is, you know, book a Broadway show without the qualifications that the quote unquote world tells you that you need to have, that's not everyone's story. And I get and understand that that's a rare, rare, rare occasion. However, now that I'm in the show, now that I am, you know, in the theater world, now that I'm um, equity and union and, and talking and running and doing all these th- different things, I need to make sure that I have the skills to stay and do what I want to do and do what I need to do in the positions that God has allowed me to be in. So what does that mean? That means as a 35-year-old, I'm taking ballet classes. I go to the bar and I do exactly what everyone else does. My plies, my time dues, the whole, the whole, the whole gambit. That means that I find people that are further ahead of me to teach me acting skills. 
self-hate skills, vocal master classes, vocal lessons. You have to put in the work to make sure that you are where you want to be. So I love, I love the, the quote in the saying, I'm going to do what I need to do right now so that I can be where others want to be later, where they wish they could be later. I love that. And can we talk about, you know, the power of having mentors and coaches in general, but definitely in this in the theater industry, you know, because um, just like anything else, relationships are currency, right? And so why is it so important for people who are looking to grow to grow in theater and to get to eventually get to Broadway to have, you know, mentors and coaches in the industry? Absolutely. The 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 key about a mentor or coach is you have them because they are doing things that you wish you could do or they are in places that you wish you could be. Truly. If somebody mm-hmm. if somebody wanted to have a um singing career, if somebody wanted to be an actor, you need to find somebody that's doing that. Why why are we trying to recreate the wheel? I tell people all the time, I'm gonna find somebody that's doing what I want to do and I'm gonna go learn from them. I'm gonna learn from their mistakes because they've already made them. Someone's like, Well I wanna make my own mistakes. Make your own mistakes and waste time. Why are you doing that? If you've already learned ten ways not to do it, I can look at that and say, Okay, out of those ten mistakes that you've learned not to do it Okay, nine of those, I would come up with the same answer, but maybe one of those I wouldn't. However, I'm going to do something else so that I can make the 11th and 12th one on my own, but I'm going to learn from the mistakes that you've made. Second off, right. I'm going to learn from your successes, the places that you were, the people that you talked to, the things that you did, what made you the way that you are. If I look at an, an incredible dancer and I look at their technique and I love what they do and how they move and how they look – and how they move across the stage, I want to know how they got that way. Yes, some people are just genetically built <laughs> to move and look a certain way. However, there's a lot of people that have, have picked up a skill, have picked up training, have taken classes, have taken privately to get where they've gotten. Second off, like if I find the correct mentor, if I find the correct coach, they can speak into me and talking to my blind spots that I can't see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is everyone, or not everyone, I'm I'm sorry, a lot of people think that they know more than they do. But if they knew more than they did, they would be somewhere that they wanted to be, if that makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. And thanks for sharing that because that's so, so important. I hope our listeners are really uh, writing these nuggets down that Darren is sharing with us tonight. And so, Darren, what is some advice you would give to listeners who are looking to audition for Broadway, right? So that, now we, we're talking about the next step, you know, after, you know, they're growing the relationships and, you know, really getting out there doing it, but taking it to the next level and auditioning for Broadway. What are some things they should be prepared for, for that, that yeah. type of audition? Absolutely. Um, I would say first, first and foremost, um, like I said before, get in lessons, acting, singing, dancing. That's the first step. Second step is work on your book. Your book is basically your repertoire that you're going to walk into an audition room with. But the beautiful part about it is right now, unless you are living in New York, you can't walk into an audition room. So everything is self tape. So make sure you have a good setup for a self tape. Make sure you have a good repertoire of monologues, of scenes, of songs that feature all that you can do, vocal ranges, styles, all of that. And then lastly, um, act, actors access. It's a, um, it's a spot where you can put your materials, you can put um, your headshots, resume, scenes, all those things, and you can get yourself out there to um, producers, you can get yourself out there to casting directors, all of those things. If you don't have representation, um, you can find representation on there, or you can talk to people um, that are in the industry, that are in the business, that can point you to either people that they use or people that they trust or people that they know um, and move forward in that way. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that because that's so, 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 so important. So thank you for sharing it for our listeners. Now, Darren, I asked all of my guests this question. 
you've created tables for yourself and you've created multiple tables for others. How did you create your seat at the table? Man, um, <laughs> honestly, it was it's it's twofold. One, um, understanding, realizing, um, I didn't really create the seat. God allowed me to be here, and He opened up doors. I just simply walked through them. Um, but in walking through those doors, um, one of my mentors and coaches um, laid this phrase on me, and I've been walking in it and with it for the past. Um, year and a half that I've been on tour for Lion King. And she said, uh, it's not arrogant, but it's authorized. And what that means is um, arrogance, I am not walking in my own power and my own understanding. What I know is that I'm uniquely made. God gifted me, wired me. There is never going to be another Darian Sanders born on September 12, 1985 raised and lived in my life, in my skin, in my shoes, with my story, through my journey, no one has experienced that but me. And so because of that, I know that I can walk in the authority that he has given me and understand that it doesn't matter what room, what position, what place that I come into. When I step into something, I'm stepping into it uniquely myself. Anytime I step on the stage as Simba, guess what? I am Simba, and I'm going to be the best Simba at that moment in that particular time that somebody's ever seen. Why? Because that's my job that I've been given at that moment. I can't think about, oh, well, this person did it this way, and that person did it that way, and this person won a Tony for this, and this person sings and does and dances this way. Like, no, I'm uniquely gifted and wired to do only what I can do and how he is gifted and wired me. And so because of that, I don't arrogantly walk in and say, I'm the best singer, best dancer, best this, best that. I just walk in authorized saying he has positioned me and placed me at this moment in this time to be here. Whether it's an audition room, whether it's a stage, whether it's a conversation, whether it's a place, whether it's just sitting with somebody, I am positioned to be here. And so because of that, I'm authorized to speak, to do, or to act however he is calling me to do. And it's not walking in arrogance of saying, guess what? I'm doing this on my own power and through my own power, but through opportunities that God's allowed me to do. Wow, 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 wow. I love that. And so a lot of people see the accolades, right? They don't see the process. And so what did failure <laughs> teach you? What did, what did failure teach you on your journey? Oh, that's, that's, that's solid. I love that. Um, man. It taught, me a, it taught me a lot. One, it taught me um, community is key um, because there are so many times um, that in failure, other people were the ones that were speaking life into me when I couldn't speak life into myself or into a situation. Other people believed in me um, far more and encouraged me far more than I could believe or encourage myself. And so failure, failure has taught me to have um, – a solid tribe around me, a solid crew. Um, failure, uh, failure has also taught me um, to understand that, that I am not the only one. There are a million people that have said, have been turned down and told no before they got their yes, that they walked into their, um, walked into their greatness. And um, there are a lot of stories and a lot of situations that, that you hear about of like, man, it's crazy. This pe- this person came out of nowhere or this person is doing this great thing or that great thing, but you don't look at and see the struggle or the journey that they had leading up to that point. You don't see all the no's for that one yes. And so um, theory has just taught me that, that everyone is on this journey together. The same person that won a Tony Award last year, has to still go into the audition room and audition the same way that I do. The difference is, I mean, they may have a a little bit of a leg up because they have a name, but they still have to audition. It's not just given to them. The audition may look different, but they still have to audition. And thanks for sharing that because 
that's that's so important, right? Because I like I said it before, you know, that process, right? And the lessons and all the things that you have to go through, people don't see that, right? They just see that you're, you know, that you're on the National Lion King tour. You've been in all these amazing musicals. They never saw the other side. So thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. So what did success teach you? Because, uh, you know, you're very successful. No, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, success uh, comes at a price in that same community that uh, builds you up is also that same community that keeps you humble. Um, If that circle is not a well-rounded, full, authentic um, circle, um, one, when you are, when you are failing, they're not going to know what to do and how to help pull you up. But also when you are succeeding, they're not going to try to take away from that and not try to diminish that success as well. Um, so, so I found that that same community, I, I found that community is, is key because they pull you up when you need, uh, need to be pulled out of the pit, but they also lift you up to help you get to the mountaintop when you need to get to the mountaintop as well. Or they lift you up when you're on the mountaintop to keep you up there. Um, so that's one thing that success has taught me. Um, another thing has taught me is I don't care who the most successful person is. They put their pants on just like, just like me, one leg at a time. They take a crap in the toilet just like me. And the fact of the matter is we are all normal. We are all human. Um, and I think for me, uh, people really don't know this about my journey, but like since I – kind of started my faith walk um I've always been kind of in the spotlight and honestly since I've been a kid I've always been the person that's been in the spotlight whether it's been um in school and being promoted to a leadership position um or um at church being put on a stage and on a platform and so there are a lot of things that just come with that that people don't really understand and see um but one of the things that I try to emphasize in it allow people to understand is um, I am just human. I want you to come up and say hi to me just like anything else. Nothing is different about me and I'm just as normal as you. And just because I'm I'm at a position to um, perform on a Broadway stage means nothing to me because I still I still want to walk into a grocery store or walk into a restaurant and talk to somebody just as normal as if I was waiting tables or if I was teaching or if I was a firefighter or if I was a stay-at-home dad. All of those things mean exactly the same thing. We are all just people. Mm -hmm. So well put, so powerful. Thank you for sharing it, Darren. That is so good. I really hope our listeners have really – got some value from this because you shared so many amazing nuggets and that was just powerful and so i'm just humbled to have you on the show again tonight to be at the table and i know we're in this 2000 you know in a new year but i really want to ask you this question before we go how you know with everything that happened with the pandemic i know you said you know you all are on a halt where do you see you know Broadway and theater this year? Though I know we're just getting ready to finish up the first quarter, but do you see it being a, a a turnaround this year to get back in, or how do you see it? What do you all see everything going for the rest of the year? Absolutely, I think um, I think that's the hope and the desire of everybody. I think everybody wants to get back to the stage, wants to get back to the theater. Um, I think we also want to do it um, in a safe manner, so I don't think anybody's rushing to do that. But I also think people are hungry. Um, people are hungry to dream, to live, um, mm-hmm. to not only perform, but to experience art in a real way. Whether you're a performer or whether you're um, uh, an attendee in the audience, people are just missing something. Um, and I think the theater allows people um, to just shed down some wall, sh- like throw off some walls and just open their eyes and dream and imagine. And so I think it just brings hope and light and love to a lot of people, and that's what people are just hoping to get back to and, and are hungry for. 
Um, but I love, um, I love acts like the Clubhouse, Clubhouse app, and there are musicals going on right now. There are performances going on right now, and we're doing it all virtually. I love that. You know, I'm a part of the Lexington Theater Company in Lexington, Kentucky. You know, we're doing a virtual event at the end of, you know, end of this month. And so to be able to do that via, via Zoom and be able to perform with, you know, fellow castmates that I started off with, like, it's, it's super exciting. But also, I think once things start to open back up, people are going to experience, you know, there's not, not everybody has been sitting and doing nothing. There have right. been people that I've been creating and doing, and the moment things open back up, some things are going to launch that are going to blow people's minds because people have had some time to relax, restore, get rejuvenated and replenished, and their minds are, are working on all cylinders because it's not tired from the hustle and bustle of, of living life and running the rat race. And so because of that, some artistry that's going to come out of the pandemic is going to be absolutely beautiful, and I'm super excited for it. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, you know, <laughs> that that is so, I'm so glad that you shine light on that, right? Because, you know, I, I always say, you know, if you haven't been working now, you're going to be behind when the door is really open, right? So Come on, that, that is so I, true. <laughs> that is powerful. And the power of Clubhouse, Darren, I mean, that's what we were able to meet at, is powerful. And so can you kind of share with our listeners, how powerful Clubhouse has it is, right? I mean, we, you're meeting people that you probably would, you know, a lot of people wouldn't have access to in like a normal day, right? And it has really um, helped a lot of people grow within their businesses and you know connections and relationships. So, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely, I love it. I think it is a a beautiful thing, and I think it it came at just the right time. I think if it came at the beginning of the pandemic no one would learn and understand the lessons that we know of how much we need people and how much uh, we crave to be in community with people. And so being on the back end of the pandemic and the quarantine and not being able to associate with people the way that we were doing before, Clubhouse allows that to happen. And it's absolutely beautiful. Like the fact of the matter that I can have a conversation with somebody in California, the same time that I'm having a conversation with somebody in Australia and England is a beautiful thing. The fact of the matter of I can connect my business to so many other people that I can market myself in terms of what I do and who I am, but more than just market myself, explain to people who I am and what I do. It's like, oh, well, you sing. Well, I do more than just sing. Like, let me, let me tell you and explain to you my heart. And it's not, a, it's not a pitch. I'm not throwing anything to you. It's just through being in proximity with you on this app and having conversations and, and daily being in different rooms that we are able to see and experience people's hearts. And it's not, hey, this multi-million dollar person or this uh, person who's struggling, whether living paycheck to paycheck or not sure where their next meal is coming from on this app together. And it's just a beautiful thing because even today we were able to sit and have a room where we just honored somebody. They just, they, they put her name up and we literally just came in and we gave people their roses while they were still here. And that's something that doesn't really happen often, but it was just so refreshing to see and understand like everyone's like, where's humanity going? All this and this and this bad, this bad, that. And I'm like, Excuse me. Let's talk about the beauty, beautifulness of this app. Let's talk about the fact of the matter that we can celebrate people unlike we've been able to celebrate people before. Let's talk about the beauty of the fact that I started a church on this app three weeks ago, and people are coming to this church service on an app from all over the world, people that necessarily would never step foot into a church. But yet they're like, man, we hear Darian sing, we hear his heart, we know who he is, we know that he is loving and accepting and not judgmental, like he is walking as Jesus walked, that's what he strives to do. And so because of that, I want, I want to hear what he has to say about this. And so to be able to walk in to this virtual church and be able to sit, we had over 
A thousand people come through church today. Mm. Mm. On day three. <laughs> I'm like, what what church do you know on day three can have a thousand people come through it? Like that's just that's insane to even think about. And so because mm. of that, like the beauty and the power of this app, it's untouchable. Yeah. Yeah. It re- it really is. I definitely agree with that. And with that being said, Darian, what what else can we expect from you the rest of this the rest of rest of two thousand twenty one and also in this new decade? We are in a new decade as well. Oh, absolutely. Um one, you can expect the same thing. I'm still gonna be me, still gonna love <laughs> Jesus and I'm still gonna run hard yep. after him. So so everything I do is gonna be based through that. But I tell you this, I uh, and, and recording some music, doing some things like that. Uh, my friend has, uh, my friend Glenn Lundy, he's got eight, eight kids and seven little babies. And so uh, I told his wife, I promised her that I would come out with a lullaby um, CD for her, for her babies. So I'm going to do that this year. I have my original EP coming out that I've been working on. Um but something that I'm 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 super excited about that I love that I'm going to continue to do this year is I'm going to continue to just plug in and and find other churches and find places that I can pour into and invest. Um, that's one of the beautiful parts about doing the Lion King on the tour is every city that we go to I find a local church and I plug in. I tell them, hey, I'm an ordained minister. I'm a worship pastor. I would love to either give your team a break or help supplement that team and so be so to be able to partner with um some churches around the globe to just help um infuse and instill just the holy spirit i just love doing so that's what i'm going to keep doing well i you know i wish you much success on all the amazing things that you already have done and getting ready to do in this new year and i'm just excited to have been able to interview you tonight and have you at the table and will you please let our uh, listeners know how they can follow you, support you, and connect with you? Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate that. Uh, you mm-hmm. can check me out on Instagram. Uh, actually, all my social medias are the same uh, same handle. So underscore Darian Sanders underscore. So underscore D-A-R-I-A-N-S-A-N-D-E-R-S underscore. Um, I'm on Facebook at same bit clubhouse if you join on there please hit me up would love to connect and we can go from there awesome make sure you all follow and support darian he is amazing and definitely somebody to know and connect with and so darian thank you again for taking time out of your very busy schedule to come to this table tonight this has been an amazing interview and i cannot wait to invite you back to the table absolutely thank you for having me i can't wait to come back you are welcome. Thank you again. And so I would like to give a special thanks to my intern, Sarah, who is a, who, who is a Tennessee State University alumni. And I would also like to give a special thanks to my intern, Vontaria, who is a student at Winston-Salem State University. You all may follow me on Facebook at Dr. Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 